In this video, let's learn about the maxillary air sinus. The maxillary air sinus is the largest of all the paranasal air sinuses and it is present in the body of the maxilla. The maxillary sinus drains into the hiatus semilunaris that is the posterior part of the hiatus semilunaris that is present in the middle meatus. In coming to the development of the maxillary sinus, the maxillary air sinus is the first sinus to develop and it appears in about the fourth month of the intrauterine life as an outpouching from the mucous membrane lining of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. The maxillary air sinus is rudimentary at the birth and it enlarges rapidly during the 6-7 years and it becomes fully developed at the puberty that is after the eruption of the permanent teeth. So in this diagram, these are the maxillary air sinuses on the both sides. These are the ethmoidal. This is the orbit. These are the frontal air sinuses that is above the orbit and the spinodal air sinuses those lie behind the orbit those lie behind the orbit coming to the measurements the vertical measurement is 3.5 centimeters the transverse is 2.5 and the anterior posterior is 3.25 the shape of the maxillary air sinus is pyramidal with the base directed medially towards the lateral wall of the nose now let's talk about the relations of the maxillary air sinus. The roof is formed by the orbit, that is the floor of the orbit. And the infraorbital nerve and the artery transfers the roof in a bony canal. In the floor, this is the roof. In the floor, it is very small and it is formed by the alveolar process of the maxilla. And it lies about 1.25 cm below to the floor of the nasal cavity. And the roots of the first and second molar teeth project into the floor that produce elevations. And sometimes the root of the first, second premolars, the third molar and really even the canine may project into the floor. And in some cases, the roots of these molar teeth are only separated by very thin mucus lining and so it can lead to clinical problems. And the base. The base is formed by the lateral wall of the nose and it has an opening or ostium of the sinus in its upper part that is very close to the roof. So this is the floor that is very closer to the alveolar process and this is the base. The base lies near to the roof and it forms a disadvantageous position for the natural drainage and it has an opening or the ostium. And the hiatus of this maxillary sinus is reduced by the uncinate process of the ethmoid bone, descending process of the lacrimal bone, that is from the front, ethmoidal process of the inferior nasal concave, perpendicular plate of the palate from the behind. These bones reduce the size of the maxillary hiatus in an disarticulated skull. In the apex, the apex extends into the zygomatic process of the maxilla and the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus is formed by the anterior surface of the body of the maxilla and it is related to the infraorbital plexus of nerves and within the anterior surface of the body of the maxilla anterior superior alveolar nerve runs in a curved bony canal that is called as the canalis sinuosus so this is the important point to remember the anterior superior alveolar nerve the anterior superior alveolar nerve passes or runs into a curved bony canal that is called as the canalis sinuosus and coming to the posterior wall the posterior wall is formed by the infratemporal surface of the maxilla that is separated by the sinus from the infratemporal and the pterygopalatine posa. 
and it is pierced by the posterior superior alveolar nerve and the vessels and the opening in the maxillary sinus the maxillary sinuses open into the hiatus semilunaris of the middle meatus that is near to the roof of the sinus so in this diagram this is the heart palate for a video on development of palate you can click on the i button this is the alveolar process this is the maxillary antrum this is the antral ostium that is the opening this is the zygomatic process of the maxilla these are the ethmoidal a sinus this is the crista galli coming to the arterial supply the arterial supply supply is by the anterior middle and posterior superior alveolar arteries those are from the maxillary and infraorbital arteries and the lymphatic drainage is the sinus drains into the submandibular lymph nodes and the nerve supply is by the anterior middle and posterior superior alveolar nerves from the maxillary and the infraorbital arteries that is same as the arterial supply and coming to the main part that is the clinical correlation of the maxillary a sinuses that is the maxillary sinusitis the maxillary sinus is most commonly infected the maxillary sinus is very most commonly infected in all of the sinusitis due to infection that can reach into the sinus from the infected nose that is the viral rhinitis and the caries in the upper premolar and the molar teeth especially in the molars and sometimes the infected frontal sinuses and the ethmoidal sinus being the in the maxillary sinus being the most dependent part it acts as a secondary reservoir for pus from the frontal a sinus through the frontonasal duct and the hiatus semilunaris the pain of the maxillary sinusitis is referred into the upper teeth and in the infraorbital skin due to the common innervation by the maxillary nerve the drainage of the maxillary sinus is by the antral puncture or the antrostomy and by fenestrating the antrum through the canine fossa in the gingival labial sulcus that is called as the cadaval look operation and the opening of this sinus is unfortunately located in the upper part of the lateral wall of the nose which is a disadvantageous site for the adequate nasal drainage so surgically the maxillary sinus must be drained by the antral puncture and the cadaval look operation the antrostomy or the antral puncture is done by the trocher and the cannula which are passed below to the inferior nasal concha in an outward and backward direction in the carcinoma of the maxillary sinus the carcinoma of the maxillary sinus arises from the mucosal lining of the sinus in the signs and symptoms produced by the invasion of the cancer can be easily remembered anatomically so if the carcinoma is invaded upward that is into the orbit it displaces the orbit causing the proptosis or the protrusion of the eyeball and diplopia that is the double vision proptosis and the diplopia the proptosis meaning the protrusion of the eyeball and the diplopia meaning the double vision and the involvement of the infraorbital nerve produces the pain and anesthesia in the skin over the face below the orbit the downward invasion of the carcinoma into the floor produces a visible bulge or even ulceration of the palatal roof of the oral cavity so as this is the floor it causes the bulging of the skin or ulceration of the palatal roof of the oral cavity and the medial invasion of the cancer causes obstruction of the nasal cavity and it causes the epistaxis that is the bleeding the obstruction of the nasolacrimal duct in this wall produces epiphora that is the overflow of the tears remember these terms and the lateral invasion of the cancer produces swelling on the face and produces a palpable mass in the gingival labial fold or the groove and the backward or the posterior invasion may involve the palatine nerves that leads to a severe referred pain in the upper teeth and this is the process of the antral puncture
So guys, this is all about the maxillary air sinus. If you like my video, do subscribe to my channel.